Welcome to season two of the Project Hope podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer. As many of you know, I am a cult survivor myself. For anyone interested, you can hear the story of how I got in and how I got out in season one, episodes one and two. The beginning of this year, 2023, actually marks my 11 years of being out, and I am so super grateful for the ways my life has unfolded since. I now work with survivors of coercive control, and I'm going to take a moment here to define this term as one of my heart's desires is to help society at large better understand coercive control in cases that are not just culty, but across the globe I view coercive control as a social issue. It's at the heart of cases where women and girls are murdered. We find coercive control in one-to-one relationships that are intimate, in gangs, sex trafficking, and cults of all types. I have a master's in the psychology of coercive control, and I'm just beginning a new element of my career as an expert witness for legal cases that involve coercive control. As a certified trauma professional, I work with survivors. I'm especially excited to be offering a group survivor program for cult and religious abuse recovery. So this is not a support group, but rather a healing program. It's based on my certification in the incredible work of Dr. Jilly Jenkinson, who gathered decades of research on survivors to create a body of work that I would consider to be the most comprehensive and flexible approach I've come across in this field. We will meet every other week for six months, and registration will open in February of 2023 for those interested. Lastly, I am also a research associate at Salford University and explore topics related to coercive control. So let's jump back into a basic understanding of coercive control before I introduce the next episode. Coercive control is a strategic pattern of behavior designed to exploit, control, create dependency, and dominate. The victim's everyday existence is micromanaged and their space for action, as well as potential as a human being, is limited and controlled by the abuser. Initially, the victim may be drawn into the relationship with love bombing and charm. Then gaslighting, isolation, economic control, and financial abuse can take place alongside rules and regulations that are gradually introduced over time and change at the whim of the abuser. The victim knows there are consequences if rules are broken and they apply to the victim rather than the perpetrator, creating a double standard. Over time, coercively controlling behavior erodes the victim's sense of self, their confidence, self-esteem, agency, and autonomy. The abuser creates an unreal world of contradiction, confusion, and fear. It may be helpful to know that 51% of victims do not even know that they are being abused, manipulated, and controlled. Coercive control correlates significantly to serious harm, and in many cases, in intimate partner violence, it precedes homicide. These can be difficult topics to grapple with, so I truly hope that this podcast helps to protect you and those you love with helpful voices and information. If you appreciate the podcast, Please let us know by subscribing and comment with kindness. And always think critically, trust your intuition, and be free. Welcome to part two of the interview with my brother Hanley. 
I know we left you on a cliffhanger last time, so I've left a little bit of the previous interview in here to just refresh the memory and hope you enjoy the rest of our conversation. The next step for us was now we've got to go be in person with her, right? And we've got to like go, uh, like sit down. And that's where, since you and I were in communication, you agreed to do that with me. And so, you know, frankly, kind of, I was like the chip, right? Or like I was kind of the yeah. the bait, so to speak. And that's when we came to California yeah. with um, the exit counselor. So it's it's Uncle Greg mom and dad myself and the uh, exit counselor all came to oakland to see to see you and again like that you know it was i knew that that would break things but yeah you know everyone was again saying it's It's the rest it's either it's already going that like it's going to go that it's going to get there if it's not there right now like but you're you will be at the stage where your mom and dad are in no time in you know in a short time yeah. So whether it happens because, you know, of this or, you know, maybe there's a, a breakthrough and it doesn't happen. But again, like it's, there wasn't any more fear of, um, oh, we're going to mess this up. It's yeah. already messed up. Right. So it's already like you're gone, so yeah. to speak. Um, so that's what we did. So we, we came to Oakland. We met, you and I met in Carmel. Yeah. Actually, I think I picked you up in Oakland and then we drove together to Carmel. I think so. I remember a couple things. One, I remember it was difficult to, for you to get away. I remember like it, you were getting phone calls a lot. You were getting oh, interesting. Yeah, it I was like I just remember it was there was y- you were there, people were checking. Everyone you. knew that I was like yes, you were like going me. with you. Yeah. You know, because it's like you. I mean, I don't know what it was two hours or something like that. But we drove like two hours. Yeah, so I remember on that car ride. You were. I remember just being uh, hypersensitive to like what's like how this is going to look read right and being really nervous i mean i remember just being like holy crap like yeah what's gonna kind of happen do you mind sharing kind of what had you guys planned so we had planned our plan was to have the lunch have carm aunt carm join um so i uh, i sorry i totally forgot that aunt carm obviously was there too so aunt greg um aunt carm and greg and uncle greg are there um but haven't sh- no one's the only, you're under the impression it's just me right in the area and so and I was out there on business and that was the story and yeah. but the plan was to basically have Carm join lunch um, and then the three of us drive back to Oakland and then the hope was to that you would come upstairs and come to the hotel yeah. or sit down in the hotel and there basically the exit counsel said like I just need to be alone with her right and not like and um and so and that was our and that was our hope was that you wouldn't go back overnight right and we would basically have oh. significant time with you and because again if he you know he felt like if he could be with you and work through this you know kind of the the terminology and you and then again then now you know we're around to shower love and support kind of thing that again we're kind of keeping you overnight and like and that was the that was the idea. So in reality, what happened <laughs> is that we had the lunch, Carm shows up yeah, and you had a physical reaction. I remember like you literally had, I remember your chest going red oh, and your face and kind of like your neck being like almost like hives a little bit. And you, and then we, and then you cried and then Carm cried a little bit too. And I think and you, you know, and it was very, I mean, it was, it was heartbreaking because it was you, but at the same time, in all honesty, there was a lot that wasn't you, right? I mean, like, I remember you kind of went through some phases and where it was, um, I like, did, I yeah, remember that you were, like, you were upset, but then there was terminology that was like that, like, like violated. I've been like, this is vi- like you violated, you know, this you're disrespecting like you know, then there was like a little it's, bit of anger it, and though what you were hearing are the messages that I had taken in and been given about you guys yeah. you know yeah. and then that language which in cult terminology we even call it loaded language yes, you know that the totally. group has this like 
vibe of the style of language yes. that they use. And I were, and we you know we were frankly actually counseled on a lot of that yeah. language too. I remember it was really difficult because we often not to get like really granular on it, but I remember we didn't do like a ton of role play, but we did do some things that were like, okay, if somebody says this, you know, like if you, you know, oftentimes you were saying things like, well, Hanley religious persecution has been going on for you know millions of years, right? Or, yeah. and, and so you know, then we would, you know, kind of say, have like try to arm ourselves with something that yeah. was like, okay, but like, does God actually want you to like not be loved by your family or have a relationship with your family? Like, yeah. you know, again, we were trying to kind of like arm ourselves with what was you know helpful reminders or you know, and again, just always reminding. Like our mission really was just to come from a place of love, and it's like fine, but like, why are you not talking to us? Like, yeah, that's fine, but you can do that. You can do what you're, what you believe, but there's also like you know. Um, like we want to have a relationship with yeah. you, right? And um, so, anyway, we actually moved through that lunch shockingly, like pretty well towards the end. Like, yeah. I, like I, there was a lot of like, you know, and the reason that Carm and Greg were instrumental was because they just had a religious knowledge base that mom, dad, and myself do not. Right? right. That was their key. It was like they've been through a cult experience. They've also just, uh, you know, they're educated in religion and like what yeah. their beliefs are. So I think, so that was important because Carm spoke to that a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Whereas I couldn't, right? And so I think that was helpful during that that conversation. And well, and also for context, how old were you? Do you know? 23? Yeah. It must have been that? around there. Yep. Because that's, that make, that tracks. Because I'm out of school. Yeah. And I remember when we finally later on fast forward, when we actually spoke on the phone, I remember you actually sharing with me and saying like that, that whole experience was super intense, you yeah. know, that you were like this young person basically like carrying this thing on your shoulders yeah. that like, is this thing going to like, are we going to like get her out? And yeah. it's like up to me kind of thing. I remember physically feeling like like ner like as if you're public speaking like we were going into this thing and I remember like when before karma was showing up I was you know like you and I are talking and I remember thinking like I couldn't even concentrate on our conversation yeah. right it's like you know karma's about to walk around the corner any minute oh <laughs> you know, my find gosh us. right um, and yes and of course like and you know and throughout that that meeting right that day just um thinking that wow we're like we're like we're about to get to this like end point right like now yeah. that's like now things are are a little smoother we all ride back together in the car yeah in the two hours back home and all that you know, was was pretty good like we're, everything's like kind of now we're just kind of like talking about more like normalcy and things. it's so interesting just to also give the listeners like a little perspective from my standpoint what's sort of fascinating in terms of like even just like cognitive dissonance and sort of coming back to oneself and one's own personality, literally within the time period of that meal, I remember by the time we got up and got into the car, I really felt good. Yeah. Like I was like, I felt clear yeah. about, okay, this happened. Here's what went down. Yeah. We just processed it. We were open about it. I'm good. And yeah. I get it because I get where my family's coming from. I knew you guys were all freaked yeah. out, you know? And that's, we were trying to, I don't mean to cut you off. No. But we, our angle was that. It was, it was keep, it wasn't get out, right? Like we need yeah. you out of this thing. It was more like, um, calm approaching this. Like your parents love you. Like Jen, like why, you know, your mom and dad, like why are you not talking to them again? Right. Like what? And then of course you have your reasonings around it. And then it was Carm kind of being like, okay, but like, I understand that they did something that was felt disrespectful and, you know, and they don't understand where you're coming from. Help them understand, like, let's work through this. Like, this is what people do. Like this, are, you know, these are yeah. you know, how families work through issues. And it was like that approach. So that, and that was me too. It was kind of like, yeah, I was like. You know, Jen, I just want us to kind of be a family, right? And like, yeah. and it feels like you've been really distant for the last two years, right? And you're not participating in our family. So how do we kind of fix that? So that was our 
approach, which, which I get, I think you received as like, by the end, it, you didn't feel threatened anymore. I didn't. It was like, I'm, and I yeah. think that's fascinating that yeah. here I am, I've been in this group now for years, we're years in at right. this point, maybe three, two years, something yeah. like that. And literally by the end, and I remember being in the car and I actually, I remember thinking to myself, I know I might get in trouble for yeah. inviting Hanley and Carm to our Sunday service, yeah. but I'm going to do it anyway because it feels right. Yeah. So it's like a moment of my real self like peeping out, yeah. you know, yeah. and then it's just incredible how, you know, and of course people do know this story where, you know, I go back, I have a conversation with Peter yeah. and then what happened from your perspective? Well, I called you, right? Yeah. So I disinvited so, you. <laughs> right. So first I tried you. We, I actually almost thought you would come inside when we drop, when we did the drop off and, um, and you, you, there was like a moment where it actually felt like something you may do that. Like you, I, I remember distinctly and I forget how we phrased it. But it was like trying different layers, right? It was like at first, I remember kind of thinking like we could get you to the room or like would you come up to the room and sit down, right? Or like come and hang out, maybe let's get dinner. And then it moved into more like, um, and you weren't really receptive. And then it moved into, well, why don't we go, let's go grab a drink in the lobby or something like that, right? Or why don't we sit down and continue the conversation in the lobby or something along those lines. Hard no. And then, but I remember again thinking there was a shot. Um, so then the and back. what's interesting is behind the scenes, I had literally been spoken to and schooled to like not Never. do that stuff. Yeah, because it, they literally like trained us of what would happen with exit counselors. Right. So yeah. I was sort of like prepped for um, all of that, yeah. and I think probably those were red flags yeah. to me yeah. that invite into like where you guys were where staying. We are, you know, right. yeah. Um, God, it's and so I, sad. Yeah, because now you obviously, again, like you realize, like, I'm not just, I mean, you didn't ask questions around it, but obviously it wasn't just like, oh, I'm on, because I'm on business, but I, I did phrase things that way. It was like, oh, I'm still here. Do you know I'm what you told business. me? Because I actually remember this. Yeah. You told me that you were going to be hanging out with one of your besties that was oh, there funny. or nearby or yeah. something. And then I think we framed it that Carm was in the area, you know, or like, and then that's why she... And that we, I think that was, I think you guys admitted to kind of the little ambushy. We move. did, but you didn't know that anyone else was there yet, right? So there's, there's oh, right, just, anyone other than right, you and other Karn, Karn. right? So we phrased it. So it was, yes, I mean, of course, we were being apparent now that like this is around, there's a reason why we're doing this, but I, there wasn't a full blown. Like knowledge, like you were under the impression that that it was a little more whimsical, right? Like, yes. oh, I'm I'm out here. Like it's not like I flew out here just to be out here to meet you. I right. was like out here on seeing a friend, and Carm's been Carm was able to be in the area. So, but yes, we thought it would be like critical that she came, and we and the three of us sat down. Yeah. But that was kind of all that was like, yeah, presented. So, so now the next one was as you said, like the invite to come to service, and I. I remember it is, I think we probably both got to this this place, but I remembered that I was coached to that was another fall, like that was a fallback, was to see you the next day, like always okay. have a plan, right? Yeah. Like we just, you know, you're not just kind of leaving it. So it's like it's as many kind of touch points or like viewpoints as with Jen as you can get. So it was like, okay, well then what about tomorrow? Like, and so yeah. that's, I think how we got to the service and then I remember you know, reporting back to everyone that evening. Yeah. Um, because obviously poor mom and dad were like, you know, just like on pins and needles the whole time. I mean, oh. they were like literally just you know dying in the sitting in the room <laughs> waiting to kind of understand what happened. And so gave everyone the full download. And I remember the exit counselor kind of being saying like, "Sorry, you know, like the, everything you've done is great today, but um, this is over," you know, kind of thing. And because because he knew what was coming, he knew that he knew as that soon you, as I would get exposed right, to Peter again, that they would just work with you overnight or like yeah. however long and get you back to like what where they needed, you know, where you were yeah, skewed against us. Mm -hmm. And so that was exactly what happened. The first call, phone call the next morning was you, and 
And I don't know if this is accurate or not, but yeah. I like I always thought that there was somebody else on that on the line. Like I felt like there was you, and either somebody else was on the phone or someone else was with next you, to me, next to you. Yeah, because you felt very. First, you felt when you called. You start to cry a little, and, yeah. that, and that I was like, "What's wrong?" And it was like, and you almost like were just trying to get something out, you know. Yeah. And it was like, and and then it started kind of that way, and you so you were crying, and then I kind of remember starting to cry a little bit because I knew th- like things were kind of coming, and it was like, um, and, and you're still really nice, but basically you were very definitive, and it was like, I can't, I can't come get you. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea for you to come to the service. Yeah, and I just and I kept saying well, why? why what's changed yeah. right so now I had been coached to try to bring awareness to you your yeah. you're being controlled so that's what we were trying to get out of our this message now it was like what's different from when you dropped me off yesterday to right now right so why has this why has your opinion changed yeah did someone like and again obviously I'm trying to lead you to that like that insight that someone's done that but yeah but you didn't really want to talk about that, and you were just there to get your message across. I really was. Yeah. I mean, I literally remember that. Like, it was, it was so, it so didn't feel right to me on so many levels, mm-hmm. um, even to the extent of like kind of biblical teachings, where I was like, "This is really weird that." they can't come to a Sunday service Mm -hmm. and I'm literally now like disinviting them Mm -hmm. from a service. Like it was just, that was off for me. And also it was just heartbreaking. Like I definitely remember kind of going, I literally don't know if I can do this, like pick up the phone and disinvite you guys. So I'm sure somebody was there with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Framing is like support. Right. right? Um, because yeah. it, it, I, because it, it then, it turned, you know, as I'm like trying to dr- basically like as I'm dragging it out, right? I mean, like that's I'm just trying to convince you, but like it's just dragging, and then you turned from like that to just like cut and dry, yeah. and it was like and not nasty, but like but it hit, like stop it, you know, kind of thing, and yeah. um, and no, and you know, and so then. You know, even for me, I think it was like, well, let's talk later. Can we? Can you, we speak on the phone? Can you? Can I see you later? Just again, trying to do anything. And now it's it's over. I mean, now again, you're just like very definitive and kind of, and saying, no, stop, like st- um, stop asking me about this or like or you know, no, I'll let you know like you know when we can talk, kind of thing. Yeah. And so. Once that happened and that was over, now it was like you just go to the house, and so that was like now gearing everybody up. And wow, so we all got in the car and now drove to your Oakland house. Did you guys ever debate whether to like show up during the no. service, it, or it was clear that the move was to come like later in the day I and risk me not being the there? Time. I think that was there was a concern around that. I think honestly, it we just were more in the camp of let's just go when we're like go now yeah. right like let's get our crap together and go and so it was more yeah just based off of like there's we're not going to sit around and kind of like try to time it um, yeah but I remember like that th- there was talk I think you know, especially for mom well like this is now you know we're going to show up Jen's going to see us we're now again um essentially sabotaging like our relationship or we're again putting it in a place where like there's we're, we're concerned about it and I remember the counselor again saying there's you it's over already right like stop thinking that way where you just it's you can need to do everything you can and we were you know we were coached that you guys would say things like we'll call the police and things like that but frankly you know in their in the exit counselor's experience that was never going to happen because you guys didn't want the attention really of authorities or things like that either so you know in my mind I was again we were addressing things like will we get in trouble or we should we be concerned about this should we like well, how can this play out yeah and really the 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 advice was you're just gonna this is just causing friction which is a good thing because you're again you're kind of just I actually don't really 
know if I probably would have done that again, but I think it was just to try to show you that we're we're here and that and that we love you, right? And and approach it from that not friction, but I shouldn't use that word, but like from the standpoint of like just come and talk to us kind of thing. Like can yeah. we go and sit down and have a conversation, right? And hopefully you you'd receive it that way. Right. And it's of course as you know, it was um it was much more like I mean you were in the beginning, so first, uh, I forget who it was, but it was almost like you were protected in a yeah. way, like you behind the door. Right. Like, like I remember someone really like standing in the door and and protecting you yeah. in that way. Yeah. So somebody was there preventing you guys from coming yes. in. My my memory of that was coming out and actually seeing dad's face through the little window. Yeah. And just, oh my God, that whole thing was just so wildly yeah. emotional. And I think the thing, honestly, that I was left with and that I remember the most about that whole experience, um, which the audience has heard about from my, my perspective, mm -hmm. um, but the thing that was so crazy about that for me was that I could feel all of your love yeah. through like everything that you guys were saying, yeah. you know, it really felt like you were really there to like convey that. Yeah, and I think totally. that was like, it hurt, yeah. you know, it was like, I could feel it and I knew it was real. And it also felt like a, an appropriate to me in my mind, it was sort of like an appropriate response to the place that we had gotten to yeah. where it was so extreme yeah, and that's what we were trying confusing to too, yeah. you know, of like, this is really just fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you were, and you were really yelling, like, you know, I remember you guys all yelling violation, like repeatedly. And it was like, oh, yeah. And it was, and I remember that word sticking out so much, but, and, and to your point, it, you know, we were trying to just be a little, logic like look at it logically and be like what's what do you mean like we're your family we care so much about you and we love you so much that we just want to like we're trying to be with you we're trying to we're trying to talk to you and you won't yeah. talk to us on the phone so we're here and this is how much it means to us so yeah. it, was, it was trying to kind of tear at that yeah like that those heartstrings of being like what's what like why are you so offended like we're your yeah. family like why are you reacting this way to us being on your property i mean i get that like you yeah know, you feel like we're violation right we're violating <laughs> your, like, your, your space but it's also just like we're also you know it's mom and dad and it's me it was kind of like trying to bring it to that like level do you know it's interesting as we're talking right now i've never quite put this together in this particular way but it really is interesting I am feeling right now how the loaded language kind of the power that it ends up holding mm -hmm. so something like that where they had been so you know it was so I was so clearly taught that what was happening in our dynamic was that you guys were violating me, that you were crossing right. boundaries, that you were being disrespectful yeah. because I had made specific requests that you were violating right. and crossing. And it's like, when you have that language in your head, especially in an emergency type situation like this, where it felt like, it felt high intensity, yeah. that whole experience. Yeah. And so in that even in that experience, it's like it's easy to go to the loaded language yeah. because it's the only thing that you've been hearing yes. for a long period of time. And it like it would like automatically connect me back into what I thought I was supposed to be thinking. Yeah, yeah. It's really and interesting. And it's funny because that, it's like you create now, then you create this verbal cycle where you're saying that and we're saying look at but look at it this way yeah and and but at some i just remember also kind of thinking like i didn't have more to to say right i couldn't yeah. like argue any more with you because it was and and that's when then it really always quickly just became to exhaustion right yeah. and then that's was your guys out all the time it was yeah. like like f you you don't you don't understand you're never going to understand but really your demands were just as you were kind of 
talking about that are your you know your parameters that you put down were things that like weren't achievable so we always had to violate them right, right. Like, we were never going to be able to adhere to like who in their right mind is going to say great like fine we won't speak to you for until you're ready to talk right or right kind of or great we won't see you you know until you're until it's comfortable with you like yeah. that wasn't you know going to sit with us so of course we were always in violation of like your rules but again right. but i i just remember thinking even at at that moment when we were with you on at the house it, it was just trying to almost like you know yet now talking in circles of right how we can like can you not see this how can you not see this and you know you were saying you know, weren't even close to seeing, you know, understanding that, or like feeling that, you know, kind of that, or conforming to what we really wanted. But that's when I remember the the part that felt really just kind of awful for me was when you 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 left, you walked out of the house and into your car, and I remember kind of like I blocked you physically at one point from like getting in your like or and you. Like I was in your way, and you, you know, basically were like, "Get out of my way," you know, like I'm, and you kind of just shuddered around me. And then I remember, like, you know, kind of thinking, at the time, like, "Do I actually stop your door? You from opening your door, like, into your car, right. like, like, do you all get these, like, physical, impulse, right?" And like, yeah, and, and we just couldn't, you know, like, so we knew that that angle, you know, I mean, we spoke as a family around things like that. Where I mean, at one point, you know, Dad. Mom and I and Greg physically thought about like actually getting a van and renting a van and picking you up and trying and like grabbing you and trying to put you in that van. And yeah. because, you know, again, everyone's advice was you'll never get them out if they get back, you know, back to the order, right? Back to the cult. Like as soon as you're, you know, but what can get somebody out is if an extended amount of time away, right? Yeah. Where you're getting rest and actual like conversation or like, you know, counseling that's helpful um yeah. around now so anyway that was i remember that thought going through my head like um you know this is kind of like at a point where like it could be more physical but then you got in your car and i remember we were almost even like blocking you a little bit in the driveway and it was um but that you were still able to like pull out anyway then you did and then you were gone and it was kind of like over from from that standpoint and then yeah and then it was like and then I, you and I did speak one, uh, after that. So there was like a real final conversation where you, it, you know, again, I, again, I say it like loosely, like it wasn't really you, like you were just, you were like kind of, I don't want to say like robotic, but it felt very yeah. like, like scripted. scripted yeah. Yes. And very much like I, you know, you are now part of you know, this thing, right? That like, you're now on the out, you're like on the outside, you're part of what mom and dad have oh, done. And yeah. now you're like, you're against me and you're, so you're not, you know, I'm not going to talk to you really anymore. I'm not going to like, and so, and I don't, and I think you did say that. I think there was like, I think there were words came out where it was kind of like, I, you know, I, I can't speak to you anymore. I don't, or I don't want, I choose not to speak to you. you know? Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking, or like trying to ask those questions of like what like, what uh, like not I, I understood the why but it was like well for how long kind of thing like what are the parameters uh, here like how can I fix it yeah. and it was just kind of one of those things that was like you know you at that point you didn't there wasn't a fix there wasn't like a, a way that I could solve it anymore and so I remember that felt really hard because now we were just kind of like oh we're all in silent it's treatment right or yeah. we're all now like out of communication with you and I think that's kind of what started like that from there it was like that was it like that was yeah. the downfall or not the downfall but that was that kind was, of the end of yeah of end talking of, yeah and now it was we moved into like letters right and like things like that so yeah. it was like trying to just stay present or keep you connected to you know our kind of side of the world yeah right the 11 year ordeal <laughs> totally. oh, God. Into the, for the phase of not speaking yeah but you and i did speak a few times there were like there were um i remember calling you and, and oddly you picking up like years later now and and it was very you know, like not scripted but just cut and dry yeah. right and it was and i remember asking you questions how are you 
Um, I'm great, you know, I'm, and that's kind of it. Or it's like, I'm better than I've ever been. I'm really yeah. happy. But like, not no emotion, just kind of like you were, you were entertaining my questions, but not like Give I could tell, any, right? And I could tell you were like things. happy with me, right? And it was yeah. like, and you didn't ask any questions, you know, about us or anything like that. But I remember kind of trying to like, like steer, you know, like, quest, like things, memories, right? Like, oh, I mean, right, like, yeah. I mean, you know, probably not shrouded at all but i remember doing things like well you know hey it's christmas like hey do you remember our christmas in australia and (laughs) and like those were fun days you know or like things like that so trying to like bring up memories and just yeah yeah, tie you to um to our family but um but so that was it i mean that honestly for yeah for like the next i don't know I feel like our time frame was it was so much shorter than mom and dad's but for at least like three or four you know five years yeah it, it was really, around there. There was like hardly any communication or luck or none. Yeah. So. Is there anything more that you'd kind of say about or whatever you feel comfortable about, um, like kind of what you went through with mom and dad or what you saw? Like, was it hard for you to have them be going through yeah. this kind of loss of me as well? And It was, I think, for me... Um, it was just a, like a really weird, like weight, if that's the yeah. way to kind of think of it. Like I just put it this way. It was like always a thing where if I had, you know, like a, if I had like a stress or if I had something that like hung over me all the time, that was kind of it for like a lot of those years. It was like, like, whoa, we've got this problem, but it was like this like slow beating, you know, drum in the in the back of your brain that was just always kind of like a problem yeah. but it was never you just couldn't you know it was never top of mind or not not top of mind but it was never you have no ability to like solve anything that at the in the present moment right so it's kind of like I just remember it's just always thinking about it yeah. right and that's all you're really doing and then you're kind of getting around holidays and those being really tough so that always was like a thing but then Again, it kind of like dies out because it's you're out of sight, out of mind, and then we're just really sad. And but it, there's just no, there's no progress. There's no nothing. So really, you're just kind of like stewing in this spot of like, oh, I really miss that person. Like it was like someone being dead, you know. But like, yeah. but they're, but you know they're not. But um, but I think to answer your question also just directly, like I think from like the hard part too was just really seeing like that effect on mom and dad. Right. I mean, they just like really, there was just a, you know, I think there was like a tiredness that like came about them from that, from like those years. And, um, and just like, yeah, I think mom, you know, like just it affecting everyone in like a stressful way in different ways. Right. And so like, I know, you know, like it was, it, it, it's like someone grieving, right? And you're kind of seeing this grieving, but there's just no, it, it is like a, a death, right? So yeah. I remember like that, that was how we kind of felt. And it was, um, it was sad to see like mom, you know, in particular, just kind of like, cause she showed emotion. Dad didn't really show as much. Dad, you could feel like his real, um, you could feel dad's like real deep, like hurt. Yeah really hard uh, but you and with mom you could just she showed it more right yeah. like she would just cry at nights and you'd just be like especially around Christmas and you'd just be like oh my god like that's um, yeah just like that that visible like right. feeling right and then you know then there's things and I remember really, dad telling me like in that year of like kind of reparations that we had where we were just hanging out with mom and dad at every vacation and opportunity we had I remember dad sharing with me because I like wanted to hear it you know there was something for me that was almost like a a weird um I don't know how to describe it but like a healing for me that came through receiving kind of these stories of what you guys went through or different feelings or even catching up on like deaths that I missed yeah I was just gonna say that too like I remember that being really hard for mom was around you know her father passing so so bj our grandfather passing away and you know you and 
you know, you wouldn't obviously attend. And you know, we, I think she, your mom held out a lot of hope, right? I think that's the other oh, um, interesting angle is that mom yeah. had a lot of hope that you would, you would change it for certain things. So yeah. like for BJ, she really, I think thought that you would come to that funeral or you would yeah. come and see him before he passed away. Cause we knew that that was coming. So I think when you didn't, again, like these are things where, you know, for me, I was a little more in the camp of, I didn't expect that anyway, so I'm okay, right? Like, I, this isn't a big emotional roller coaster for me. Whereas for mom, it was. It was like, yeah. you know, she really broke down at times where you, she was disappointed again that you, you, know, you weren't around and that we weren't able to get you or you wouldn't, you know, she just couldn't like wrap her head around why wouldn't you do yeah. that? Why wouldn't you come be with, you know, uh. say goodbye to him kind of thing? So, well, and it's so true because, you know, and this is where, like, when we talk about the kind of personality change, it's like, you guys are trusting and moving from a space of knowing who I am in my right. true nature, You're right? which was being you like suppressed, be right. you know, totally right. It's yeah. Like, I mean, and as you know, we've already covered, I mean, yeah, when I, during those, any conversations I spoke to was just such a different person. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think that was the, the bulk of, um, just kind of the way we, yeah, we like approached it from then on was like, you know, it's going to fall to, let's try to chip away and, and like, and just still continue doing things that hopefully tie you towards us like letters. And again, but honestly, that at some point it just became more like acceptance of, at least for me, you know, it did yeah. where it was like we're a little more beholden to what you want to do. Like, like this thing's got it. The big shifts have to happen for you to, to kind of, and we'll have to like see what that course does. Right. It's not like we yeah. became like less active yeah. of trying to like get you out. Right. Right. It's just, a Which shift that was really heartbreaking too, I think because it was like an acceptance a little bit. And, yeah. um, and then the other last, like, real emotion that I was, like, I kind of forget about, but whenever I think of dad, I, we, like, it, this came out so much, too, was, like, real, like, like just anger, like, physical anger, like, uh, to be candid, like, you know, dad and I talked about that, like, mm -hmm. like, what are options around, like, you know, doing, you know, using back channels of, like, of physicality, right, or, or, you know, bringing this thing down in certain ways or, you know, or, um, again, even like grabbing you, but that was like, there was such a pure hatred for, for, you know, knowing that this was like, ha that someone was doing this to you. Right. Yeah. I think that's like the, 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 the way it really felt. Now we also felt comfortable, not comfortable is the wrong word, but I think we felt safe enough where we had all done research where it felt like there wasn't like there wasn't sexual abuse right and there's yeah. like things where you know that again maybe that like changes someone's like reaction i mean i would imagine it does but or like yeah. what your kind of what your actions are but i think for us again we kind of got to a place where it was like this is really messed up and this is so scary and awful and you're being controlled um and that but it was also like we have to let you figure, figure some of this out. out. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and let's kind of uh, keep evaluating this, like where it's, like where it's going. Right. Cause it, yeah. yeah. Cause there was always this thing in my mind where it was like, well, what if, you know, there is a thing where it's like they, you know, as a group decide that they're better off not being on earth or things like that. Right. right. Or like we're, you know, we are doing things as a group. Um, so yeah, we were kind of always like trying to like gauge that or monitor kind of, yeah. Where, you know, what your safety was like. Yeah. Because again, if that changed, then it was like, then okay, you might we've, consider we've more change. extreme exactly actions. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's so hard. You know, I'm, I think right now, Hanley of, um, uh, you may not be familiar with these guys, but Nippy and Sarah, um, Sarah Edmondson, who they were in the Nexium group. Oh, yeah. And, um, I forget oh, yeah. if this was actually in my recording with them or if it was something that we talked about where I thought that Nippy made such a good point where he said something like, you know, I've just come to the place of realizing people don't feel compelled to kill other people 
unless that's your only choice. Right, unless you're driven to something. Like right, yeah. and it's like a really extreme situation. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's like, wow, dude, good point. Yeah. You know, it's like this is... So for, for people to understand, this is simply the level of feelings or the level of desire to, like, kidnap me or physically get me or harm somebody else to get me, whatever mm -hmm. that would be, that is simply a direct weight of how harmful it was, how much you guys cared, how painful yeah. this whole thing was, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, we really talked through, like, all sorts of options that were... But, in, again, in, like, uh, evaluating all that, it was... Um, it's such a weird thing, because it... On certain, in certain ways, you were okay, right? And so, and you were healthy enough. And but then in other ways, when I remember thinking this way too, when you really did get back down into the granular, uh, like control of what was happening to you, and that, like, frankly, like your life is being wasted away, and you know, and it's not healthy. Yeah, it kind of did bring back up anger again, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, like when we would get back into it, or we would talk about it, and we would just be, yeah, kind of as a family thinking about it again. I would just remember that, like upwelling again of like pure, like holy shit, we've got to do something now. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Like, we've got to figure this out, kind of thing. And then, you know, oh. in a weird way, all of a sudden, like, I mean, again, this is like us, like mulling over what to do after you know over years and years, and then you know. And in a weird way, all of a sudden, like news started to kind of come around where like there was some shifting going on. So, yeah, yeah. Then I remember thinking like, okay, we've got to. Um, but really, then it was really you guys that you know, initiated. Put it that way. Yeah. Kind of right. Next step. Right, because our first touch point was a phone call that I actually initiated. Mm -hmm. then, right. Yeah. Yeah. You basically asked if it was very. It was. I think you were really vague. You think you called and just said uh are you are you around for lunch and i'd like to meet you and that was it i don't think we really like addressed a lot on the call yeah i think we just took the step of because i know so because i know you didn't tell me what you were thinking right and, but, and i remember thinking but this is you're talking about when we got, when together, we got together which was i had left at that point right right well i think you were still in it but you were you knew you were out. So in short, like whatever, I don't know kind of how what you had communicated to the group yet, but I, my recollection first, what was funny just to take a step back was that I remember you guys being in Warwick. So we found out that you guys were in New York, right? Yeah. And so mom and dad are in New Jersey. I'm in New York. And I remember first thinking what like, we felt like a real slap in the face because originally you were protected right and you were kind of we felt like the reason they pe take people to Oakland is that they get you away from your family they distance you there's like there's just a greater you know logical distance right I mean it's like yeah. that helps you you know get their message across right whereas if somebody's I don't know an hour drive away like that's going to be a lot more challenging so when we found out that you had now come back to New York and you were within like an hour and a half of us, yeah. we were v like very upset because it was like a kick in the, you know, a slap in the face. It was yeah. like, oh, you're so ingrained and you're so, and we felt that with people, like really more from like our thoughts towards Peter. We were like, oh, you're so confident now that, that Jen is ingrained with you, that you oh. can feel comfortable putting her in this place, which is like very, in, in our circle, geographic circle, right? Yeah. So that really angered us. And I remember saying, well, you know, that's, you know, let's use this kind of thing at some point. And so my and mom and dad obviously did go see you yeah. at some point there. Yeah. Um, and that was a big, that was a big, that was a big moment, moment of shift. Yeah. yeah. But basically I left. Yeah. Because you and I had talked and we had had a little bit of communication happen, it was so amazing to then, so then that's when we got together for yeah. lunch. So then we got together for lunch. I remember how different you looked. Oh. One, well, you were still in clerics at that lunch. Oh, was I? Yes. Oh, interesting. Uh, maybe not. Let me take that back. I might but have been. I you, don't know. You may have been, but you're... You know, like, you're just, your look was very different, right? And I remember, um, you know, your hair being, like, a lot more gray and, like, things like that. Oh, and, yeah. And so I remember, 
us kind of having like a a funny moment a little bit about like our physical appearances like now it's been you know like honestly probably like right. seeing each other like over five years in person right oh so, yeah so i think that i remember like we had a, kind of like a laugh about that but you were and you were very different now in this meeting like, our, like yeah. my recollection is like oh there's a lot more of jen but there's still like this like not glaze, but like when we talk, got into certain stuff. But there was much more of a warmth back in you, yeah. and this like, and yeah, this person who I knew, and then I remember, um, yeah, like we just had really like a, a good lunch. But basically, you like talked me through it and what yeah. you were like thinking and going through, and we just cried a lot at the end. Yeah, and but I, like I, I took a bus and I remember I got back on the bus and I was crying calling mom and dad and I was like she's she's getting out like I think she's like I think she's honestly getting out and like that was like crazy I remember dad saying you know, what do you mean like yeah what are you exactly as he honestly couldn't he could he asked like three or four times what do you mean like what are you talking about yeah and I said I, you know again like just reiterating kind of what you had said and I said I think like things are breaking like, down for real and think, yeah and I think uh, I think Jen's like understanding I think she's like seeing what's going on yeah and and then it for us it was like like we need to move a hundred miles an hour like this can't, we, we're not gonna like mess around like we're not gonna like I mean the whole like thought of you know I, and I forget I think I we I think you and I said like let's relax or, or like marinate on this for you know for 24 hours or something like this but I remember kind of saying like being very aware where I needed to like make sure we were talking again so I remember kind of thinking in my mind like well, let's I'll call you tomorrow and like let's you know it's funny because I think so I don't know if this is accurate or not you know memory yeah. is so weird my recollection is that actually Oh, maybe it wasn't right there. Maybe it was like the next day. But I rem I thought it was actually at that lunch that you asked me if I uh, wanted to move in with you yeah. to the New York apartment. I think we did discuss that. I think, well, I think we I did. Said, well, I think you know. I think it, it certainly came out because it was a, a two bedroom apartment, right? So I remember. I think it was really like natural and just kind of saying in discussions of like, what are you thinking? Like, what do you right. need to do? And then I remember saying, well, I've, I've got a room, you know, like I've, I've so that, I think, you know, we, I think we did like really float that idea around. Yeah. And then when I spoke to mom and dad, it was like, oh, hell yeah. Like get, like, she's got to come there ASAP. Yeah. And it was like, so, and then, and then I honestly, I forget the rest of the kind of the, the details. Yeah. Like how you kind of got there and like, move, it was, it I all think. happened really quickly actually. Yeah. And I was so grateful because I remember, you know, from my standpoint, and I'm not sure how much I go into this actually, but I was in such an altered state kind of from the moment I left yeah. that when you invited me to live with you, I could actually feel right away that it was right. Yeah. And it was so, it's funny to cool. think about that, right? Because it's almost like, it's sort of like enough of the old me was back. It was. That I could feel that that was yeah. right and that it was a good option yeah. and that it felt safe to me. Well, and how strange to go to a, an apartment where it's like a lot of old furniture too, yeah. right? I mean, a lot of, I, you really walked into a place where it was like memories are everywhere visibly. So I think that must've been something where you were like, oh my God, like this. That this was like, actually huge homes. for me. Yeah. It, it like actually home. made a big difference. It did. Yeah. It felt like home because I was like, oh my God, I'm literally sitting on our couch that we grew up yeah. on, yeah. you know, watching right. shows totally. together. It was like, yeah. So that was actually really important for me. That That's was cool. a big deal. Yeah. I yeah. think um, the other thing that just, as we like, not to move another step ahead, but I think is like all of that. Like, I remember feeling so sensitive to you, like, how you, you know, as you said, like, you were, you were enough of, of Jen, but there was still a lot that was, so much was going on, oh. right? And I remember kind of, like, just being really sensitive to, or trying to, and not even understanding still, yeah. like, even, you know, like, now when we look back at it, it's a lot easier, but I think there's so much of, of me that 
just even was not getting that you were processing so much at the time. And yeah. But I do remember thinking, you know, like I had a, a circle of friends that was like, let's go watch a football game and drink a lot of beer and do these things, right? And, and I remember, you know, you coming to, to stuff, but I was very trying to be a little more protective of like what you were seeing, so yeah. to speak, or like this world of like throwing like back into like a busy bar in New York, right? right? I mean, that's a very different scenario that you've been around. For right. Like I had not like a sip yeah. of alcohol in 11 <laughs> years. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, and, uh, and you know, even like, I don't know, even New York, right? I mean, I don't know why I felt this, but I just remember like, if, you know, like, I don't know, people aren't always like um, polite, right? And if like, and yeah. if, or, but again, like just, there were things that I remember feeling almost like a little sad about where like, if you and I went out, um, I was like, oh, is this like, like, is this fun for her or is like, or is this what she wants? Or like, this feels like a lot, like it feels like this is a lot going on. And honestly, like just, this is just my guilt or like things. I remember feeling like I wasn't a really good brother at certain times because of like drinking and then like going and talking to other groups. Right. And like you like we're still finding yourself and like and you could obviously talk to anyone but again just kind of like looking across a room and being like oh like do like where Jen go kind of thing oh right? and yeah just kind of like just personally again just feeling like oh I'm not you know like I need to be aware that this is still a very like sensitive yeah time and then and then I would you know and then uh, just putting guilt on myself like oh like forgetting that right or like doing something and all of a sudden it's been like an hour and I haven't like seen you across the room or I haven't been in like you know, checked in on you or things like that so there was just I remember yeah that just kind of shifting yeah from like this st st like st yeah just kind of I don't know I think there's well, I again, we're getting to know each other again right in a way, right like I think yeah. that's kind of the, the message is a little bit of like oh and you know and I think people like myself it's kind of like you want to hopefully like live up to what like somebody you're like what you guys are right or kind of I don't know there's just a not a pressure but it was like oh um, I like let's hope that we develop our relationship again right yeah. and, like, and that's so you're just kind of like trying wanting to do that in you know, through being like the right person right I guess yeah. that's like the way I kind of looked at it. Right, but I think it's it's interesting too because in some ways during that time I sort of encountered for the very first time in my life some feelings of like social awkwardness. Yeah. You know, so that was odd and sort of threw me off a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, I would say between you and I, it was actually really refreshing to me kind of how you were, you know, that you, yeah. thank goodness, it's like you included me, you brought me along, yeah. I was meeting people, um, and I did feel very cared about by you and kind of like protected and yeah. taken care of. Um, but I also think in some ways it was kind of um, refreshing to just be in someone's real life yeah and that in some ways it's like the permission to just be human yeah in, out of saying. the environment that I had been in you yeah. know where it's so like high performance and total like integrity and yeah. total enlightenment and you know which of course is actually kind of hilarious because now looking back on it it's like even just knowing that that group now sits around and trolls us right. who have left on right. the internet yeah. and literally sit around and make fun of us. Yeah. In some ways, I so love that that happens and that I even know that yeah. because it's like your whole thing is about like spiritual evolution right. and being and a good person like, right. and you're basically the a-hole that totally. makes fun of people and gets joy yeah. and out of making fun. right waste that. your yeah. time doing that yeah. it's like i am so glad to never have to think that way again yeah. to be able to eat make the decisions for myself that I get to be the person that I choose to be in yeah. each moment. You know? Yeah. I remember that well, that we, it was really cool when we would like meet up after work and it was like, 
what do you want to do? Should we go get sushi? Like it was, and just having yeah. like the you know the access, you know, to go do whatever we want. And I do remember like you just kind of feeling uh, or like seeming to re- like to respond to that, right? It was like really fun for us just to like go out and do different things or like yeah. on a whim, right? Like very much of like, cool, what do we do for dinner tonight? Let's well, and then, this. yeah, and the other cool component to that was actually cultural stuff. Yeah. So that was so nice because we're sort of kindred in that way yeah. and always have been. So starting to like check out all the museums yeah. randomly on like a Sunday where you and I didn't have plans, we'd be like, do you want to just go down the road to yeah, cool. Dizzy's Jazz yeah. Club? And we'd yeah. get like, you know, walk in and get cheap tickets. Yep. And that was, yeah, bro. Know. You were such a huge part of me getting myself back, you know, cool. and coming alive again yeah. and reconnecting again to all the stuff that I did lose while yeah. I was in there. So, well. We always had that hope, you know, and I think that was like, I, I think we really all did like believe that, that there was, you know, there was going to be a resolution to it. It just, we were like, obviously the timing was like our, our thing and our issue. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when that, that all happened, it was pretty amazing. Well, thank you so much yeah. for sharing all that. And is there anything else that you'd want to say or anything you kind of feel like if you, if there are other kind of family members listening you know, it's a really good question, tough question. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that the one thing that's re- that really was hard was to, like, stay on it, right? I mean, it's, like, it's a painful process, and it was hard to, like, stay, to continue to do things and yeah. reach out. It's hard to make a phone call, right? It's hard to, like, oh. like it was really, like, every time I called you, it felt nerve-wracking, right? Like, yeah. I, are you going to pick up, right? And if you do, like, how's this going to go? Yeah. But... I do think like that stuff really helped, you know, yeah. like, and I, th- and you're better, you know, you know better than I do, but I think that as hard as that was for us, it was like, it was, it was so needed and, you know, and it helped. And I think like, that's kind of my, like my takeaway is that yeah, you, honestly, it's very cliche, but like, you just can't give up and you like have to, cause those things are getting through. And at some point when hopefully something like what happened with you there's like a slight you know a slight window that stuff shines in right and like kind of gets like you know hits you and affects you and it's like you know there isn't you know you just hopefully felt despite all this my family loves me right and I and that's like exactly what we wanted the whole time because it was that's all we cared about it was like just you like we just want you so yeah I think that's like the my thought is that um you know there just is that like that like stuff works, you know. I mean, and but and, and I got can also say find their path too, right? I exactly. Mean, like it's so individual. It it's is really hard. It is, and you're right. And and you just spoke to something that's so important too, which is the. It's like the families are already in so much pain that then to reach out is a risk of further rejection, yeah. which may just feel unbearable for yeah. some, you know, yeah. or at different times. Um, and I can also say, while in some ways, when I first got out, it was kind of like, I, I mean, I was so messed up that I didn't even really compute if you guys would sort of take me back or not. Yeah. And of course, on a deeper level, I totally I always that. knew yeah. that. Right. Um, but, you know, and then, of course, it was just a massive, massive lifeline and you know many people are really not as lucky as I am in that you know you guys just so wanted me back that while we had a lot of reparation to do and a lot of sharing to unfold I think also it's like the love really was always there so there was never any like anger towards you right where and and like and that it's funny like i would never imagine like i i wouldn't expect that emotion where someone's like are you upset with me right but for like for not speaking with you yeah i was never like it never entered our minds it was anger at what's been done to you right and like that like that's where we were that is how we were upset but it was nothing that you you know we kind of felt like we understood how how 
that how you got in right and like how yeah. there was like you were manipulated and that it's un, like it's understandable in certain ways you know and so yeah so we always had this like anyway our stance was just that like it was once you were out it was like you know just how how do we also just help right because yeah. we knew that that you know there was a lot that was coming down the pipe that was going to start to digest for you like oh this you know a lot of what i believed in is over right yeah and so how do we help with that healing well and i think that's also you know the fact that you guys likely it's probably partly the having hired exit counselors that you were aware mm-hmm. of all those things that then really did make a difference for yeah. me you know yeah. and it really was a support where I wasn't like coming out receiving you know so many of us that leave really do feel so much shame and guilt like I think it's one of the first things that really has to come up and hit you know it's like the impact of what's happened and been done the reconnection piece with you guys was such a massive massive support and like point of re-entry for me to my to myself again you know yeah and now we That's get cool. to live close by. I know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Back to two peas. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Love oh, you, bro. Yeah, I love you, sis. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. We so hope that you enjoyed this episode. And please stay tuned for part of Leaving the Cult the season two song written by Jaya Suri. And for all things related to Jaya, her music, ways that you can support her, check out the show notes.